Now, I almost never say good things about the New York Times. I frequently point out that the New York Times is effectively an arm of the US government. Top editors at the New York Times have confirmed that when they have a sensitive story that involves so-called US national security interests, they send those stories, or at least a summary of those stories, to the US government, to the relevant agencies in the Pentagon and the intelligence agencies, the spying agencies. The New York Times sends those stories and has to get approval from the US government to make sure it doesn't challenge so-called national security. So the New York Times is not independent of the US government. But every now and then, to save face, the New York Times has to acknowledge some of the horrific crimes that the US government carried out, and especially when it's Trump who was president. And when, when Trump was president, they can say, oh, well, this was a horrible war crime, or at least an accident, if they don't admit it's a war crime, but it was the evil orange man, Cheeto man, Trump. It, it wasn't a good moderate, moderate Democrat like Biden. But the New York Times just published a story titled, A Dam in Syria Was on a No-Strike List. The U.S. Bombed It Anyway. Now, I point out, this is five years after it happened, so it won't impact U.S. foreign policy goals. But that's how the U.S. government goes. So let's look really quickly at the story because it shows the horrible war crimes committed by the U.S. military abroad. A dam in Syria was on a no-strike list. The U.S. bombed it anyway. A U.S. military report warned that striking the giant structure could cause tens of thousands of deaths in Syria. This is published January 20th, 2022. Near the height of the war against the so-called Islamic State in Syria, a sudden riot of explosions rocked the country's largest dam, a towering 18-story structure on the Euphrates River that held back a 25-mile long reservoir above a valley where hundreds of thousands of people lived. Keep this in mind, 18-story structure. This is like a large major building and it held back 25 miles of water in a reservoir. This would have totally destroyed the community with hundreds of thousands of people below it. Not, not, not how they're talking about a series of explosions hit it. Explosions. Now note how the Syrian government and Russia initially blamed the United States of being behind these explosions, that is, of bombing the dam. But the dam was on the U.S. military's so-called no-strike list of protected civilian sites. And the commander of the U.S. offensive, that is, Lieutenant General Stephen J. Townsend, said allegations of U.S. involvement were based on, quote, crazy reporting. Well, if the Pentagon says it, it must be true, right? You can never question the Pentagon, never question the war makers in the U.S. government. Well, eh, they were wrong. It was the United States that bombed it. And by the way, when Syria and Russia blamed the United States, they were correct. How many times in the Western corporate media have we heard that when Russia or Syria or China or Venezuela or Cuba or Iran or any of the other big boogeymen of Washington, how many times have we heard that when they correctly accuse the U.S. of a war crime or another atrocity, that it's propaganda, that it's fake news, that it's crazy reporting, that it's Russian propaganda? Well, OK, this time that so-called Russian propaganda was correct. The United States bombed this dam. In fact, members of a top U.S. special operations unit called Task Force 9 had struck the dam 
using some of the largest conventional bombs in the U.S. arsenal, including at least one BLU-109 bunker buster bomb designed to destroy thick concrete structures. And this is according to two former senior officials. So by the way, as with all of these stories from the New York Times, this is an example of what you could call selective leaking or controlled leaking. This is a story that was clearly allowed to be leaked by people in the Pentagon who clearly had problems with the Trump administration's policies, who probably have problems with this top secret unit task force nine. And maybe this is a way of those other elements in the Pentagon of trying to, to rein in these operation, special operations units. Now it's no surprise that Donald Trump gave, gave total free reign to special operations units, the commandos, a lot of whom are, are big Trump fans, to just carry out these operations. So maybe this is part of an internal battle in the Pentagon, and you have more liberal elements who criticize Trump and who wanted to rein in the special operations units who are these crazy Trump guys who are bloodthirsty and who are known for doing things like canoeing the skulls of their victims by like, Carving, I mean, I don't even want to explain the horrible atrocities they commit. The, just the mutilation of the bodies of their victims. These people are psychos. And so the point I'm saying this is, the reason I'm saying this is that when we look at a story like this from the New York Times, it has to be acknowledged that there is a political conflict going on inside the Pentagon, inside the U.S. military establishment inside the U.S. military industrial complex, inside the national security state. And that's why some of these stories are selectively leaked, because it advances certain interests of one faction of the military industrial complex, or it advances a certain U.S. foreign policy goal this week that is different from the goals five years ago. Now, keep in mind, this was March 2017. Donald Trump was president. So, again... It's very likely that this, these are anti-Trumpers. But I mean, it's good that we have this, this information because it, it shows that when the US military claims that allegations of it committing war crimes are crazy reporting and Syrian and Russian fake news, well, in many cases, it's actually correct. Note how they used bunker buster bombs. These are bomb, huge, huge bombs designed to destroy thick concrete structures. These are similar, these are the bombs that the US under Trump also dropped on, in, on Afghanistan, on this cave structure that was created by the, the Taliban. Actually, it was created by the Afghan Mujahideen back when they were the CIA's boys, back when Ronald Reagan invited them to the White House and praised them as freedom fighters. But this is another tactic of the Trump administration, was just, as he said it, bomb the hell out of them. And we see them using these just massively destructive bunker buster bombs. They had done it, this special operations unit that bombed it. They had bombed the dam despite a military report warning not to bomb the dam because the damage could cause a flood that might kill tens of thousands of civilians. So, this is an important story. Again, I talked about why the New York Times is reporting this. It doesn't mean that suddenly the New York Times is, is a muckraking anti-war outlet. The New York Times still obediently supports every single U.S. war drive. They're printing a lot of propaganda right now about Ukraine. So the New York Times is still an awful propaganda mouthpiece. But this story is yet another piece of evidence on a huge mountain of evidence showing the U.S. military committing war crimes.